All right, well, welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna take this old, I don't even know what year it is, 90s, five, six, something, Ford pickup F350 diesel, and he wants he wants to do a rear disc brake upgrades. All right, couple of calipers, uh, some springs, brackets maybe. Oh, now we're talking now, brackets. I don't know who, I don't know where those kits from. Lug nut 4x4, Tennessee. Okay, there we go. Again, not sponsored. This isn't a how-to video, this is how I do video. Um, I didn't even buy the kit. It was just a buddy of mine wanted disc brake conversion on the rear, so that's what we're doing. Brake lines. Give us a sports page, clips, and another little tab. I'm assuming e-brake stuff. And there's paperwork in. There is some paperwork in here. I'll have to get the paperwork out. And it came with new lug studs. Sticker. Card. That's your instructions right there. And then a packing list. That's it. Rotor goes behind the hub on all the kits except for the newer 14 bolt slide on rotors. Um, that's the instructions. And they don't plug that, so there's a bunch of crap in there. And this one's plugged, but this one's not. We have an e-brake kit, but we don't have... Normally the e-brake is inside of these, so... Maybe these have an e-brake option? Maybe that's what this part's for. In the spring. <clears throat> see, this one might actually have a picture. Oh, universal emergency brake cable kit. All right, well, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna get the back of the truck jacked up, back tires off, jack stands under it, and I'm gonna kind of see if I can make sense of this. Or maybe I'll go visit their website also to see if uh, maybe it has a little bit better instructions than seven sentences. We'll see. I'll be back. I got the truck in the air. I did get on their website. There's some like facts and questions and answers. It's pretty in depth. I don't think it's going to be super difficult, but there was no like real instructions with any real pictures. Um, I think we're just going to tear into this and just kind of start feeling it out. It does spe specify all kits are designed for off-road use and by installing it, you accept any risk associated with it. So, and me working with metal as much as I do, I mean it's nice and thick. But once I get this on and everything centered and I and I weld here and I get that caliper on, I might see if I could put little braces of some sort. We'll see, but when he specifies off-road use only and uh, we're putting this on our on-road truck, kind of makes me a little nervous. But I'm gonna need a few more parts here. Let me turn your light on. Um, I know that didn't help. Uh, I don't know if the wheel cylinder was leaking or if the actual rear end seal was leaking so since i gotta pull it apart anyways i need to get a seal i'm just gonna pull it all apart shut the camera off after this one's apart i'm just gonna go get that one knocked out real quick and then get everything cleaned up and i hope the seals are here by the time i'm ready by the time i have a plan at least let's let's call it that let's get started A 
ugly looking oil in there. pick up some of this stuff and put it in a cleaner area and then uh, come back and we'll buzz all this off. Got to get that e-brake all disconnected out of there and then pull this whole piece off. get these studs out easiest way cheap little air chisel I get a deep half inch drive socket that your chisel fits in it fits over the let me get this this fits over nice over that it's just a guide otherwise you jump all over and beat the hell out of it this is easy way to just keep that directly right on that These are still reusable if we were to reuse them, but we're putting these uh, supplied studs in, it looks like. I'm hoping the lug nuts fit. Maybe you should grab a lug nut and let's try it. All right, well, they fit. That's great. And I'm uh, kind of assuming that the shoulder up here, it's hard for you to see. Let me turn your light on. <laughs> Because these are shouldered different, and since this rotor needs to go on the back side of that hub, I think that's what this little shoulder is, is to help line it up. So I'm going to get finish getting this cleaned up, and we're going to try and fit that. So I'm trying to test fit. Since there's no pictures, no diagrams, and the instructions are fairly vague, because it says... Uh, the rotor goes behind the hub on all kits except the newer 14 bolt with slide on rotors and Ford Sterling kit. And I don't know which kit this is because I didn't order it and I don't see anything on it that states which kit this is. And it goes to say you can put the calipers in front or behind the axle. Okay. I think that just means forward facing or rear facing um, it says test fit the studs on the rotor before pressing them in the stud should fit easily if not drill the rotor or grind the studs so they fit properly so it's either they fit or they don't all kits are designed for off-road use okay so I have this set up behind but <clears throat> there's a heck of a gap in here and you drop a stud down in there. It don't work down in there. And I'm afraid with this gap, as soon as you tighten those tires on, it's just going to crack this all the way around. I did try. Let's see here. I thought maybe this is the kit that slides over it. So I flipped it. Now, if you want the rotor hidden way inside of your tire, it fits. But I don't 
think by the time you put that bracket and everything on there, it's not going to... So I flipped it. And it doesn't sit. You can see down in there, it doesn't sit down on it. It doesn't... I'm not sure... This doesn't fit this way because it doesn't clear down in here. So I think I'm on the right track with a fitting like this. But I don't know what I need to grind now, so I'm gonna get back on their website and do at least another hour's worth of research because that's what it took me last time I was on it looking for some instructions. I found that I believe he ordered the wrong kit. I believe this kit is for a Dana 70 and after doing some looking on his rear end, he has a Sterling 10 and a quarter. I'm gonna do some research, see if I can find the right rotors. I think the calipers are the same no matter what the kit is. I think the rotors are different and possibly the bracket. And if that's the case, this might be sitting here for a week. So I'll update right. you. It's been about five days. We have, these are the correct brackets for this rear end. They just, it looks easy. We're gonna bolt on. We just figure out how we want them on there. The old weld on these, these were for Dana 70. I don't know if I've mentioned that in the video before because it's been a few days, but this is the correct stuff. So that uh, buddy of mine that ordered the wrong kit, he just assumed he had a Dana 70 when he has the Sterling 10 and a quarter. So these rotors for the Dana 70, I guess they're off like a square body, I guess, you know, 80s, whatever, uh, K20 front end. And if this was a Dana 70, they'd work fine. Brackets would work fine. It's not oh, lug nut off-road that we ordered the wrong stuff. It's not their issue. These other lug studs are not going to work either. But the rest of the kit will, which is actually pretty good. Just basically, these were ordered through um, the lug nut 4x4. And we got the seals locally. And we have the rotors locally that were, I guess for the Sterling, they are 99 E350 rear rotors. So, uh, we gotta get the studs put back in. So, 7 8 socket over it, keeps us going, but I'm gonna need to find my things for my ears. Okay. Yeah, you could put the not and this this works good yeah that'll work now to get him back the rest of the way A little homemade driver tool all right good enough so we got new seals says right on the seal here oil side so that'll go that way after we get the bearing in and the little fancy little washer tap that in pretty good I always put a little grease around that but I gotta figure out what I did with the grease so I can go ahead and bolt this back on because the new drum off this just slides over. If we would have had the right kit, it would have been so much quicker. So let's just get this done. So I already uh, cleaned the surface up pretty good, but I'm gonna get, no, it's actually really clean. Now I'm gonna put a little, little bit of grease around that seal edge too. Make sure your little 
notch there lines up. Alright, let's see if we can set this. to get it seated otherwise you may end up with a lot of play in it once it seats it might be it if I had the right socket it would work better but there we go that's perfect. All right, I'm gonna grab the, slide that rotor over this. So this is how this rotor will fit. Okay, has an R for right. Bleeder goes up. And then bracket. I guess it doesn't matter, you can go this way, go this way, let's see. So that'll put it up here. It's tight. Okay, I'm gonna go do a little research and figure out how this bolts to it. I think I got it figured out. I'm pretty sure it goes behind in there. Know, let's get this off. It's murking. So it does wiggle through there, screws on there. Okay, figured that out. We gotta get these uh, prepped and painted, so you can't really put it on yet. I mean, I wanna look into this uh, e-brake bracket, come on. Does fit nice, so those need to be prepped and painted. Now we have these brackets. Looks like they uh, fab up themselves. Okay. Okay, that and this. This looks like it goes down there somehow. And then there's this one. Okay, I'm gonna get the e-brake figured out. I'm gonna get everything prepped and painted when I come back. I'll show the assembly of how these go. Um, I even looked at other people's videos and, and they're pretty vague also. Uh, and I'm gonna get the other side caught up to where we're at on this one. All right, I got everything painted. Uh, just test fit and everything. They must have punched this hole and then put this bend in it. I don't know if the camera will pick it up, but you can see that shiny right there is, it's angled up. And when you go to put this in place, it just wobbles on there because you're gonna have to flat file that. And then of course you gotta paint it again. All right, let me go track down the file. All right, if you're gonna do this and you don't have flat files, you're probably gonna Probably gonna hate it because you're gonna have to figure out something, but I think you can just eat oh, that one's I wish they would have uh punched that hole again. I think the other one's rubbing now too. That paint might just be too thick. I I primed and painted, so alright, so that should work. Um there's not really good pictures on this let me you can kind of see it um, so what I did was I took my wrench and I I moved this let me get that wash out of the way, like this and if you watch this you guys can't see it so that piston in here, if you move this one direction, it'll move that out. If you move it the other direction, it, it don't move in. So you just gotta push it back in. So 
So we got to do a uh, put this on and then we adjust this to where it's squishing on that caliper kind of just hovering so we got to get all this bolted on and then we're going to turn this and then we bolt this piece on it uh, this is what side is this one this is the left so i just wasted my time because we're working on the right that's that one let's work on this one. Oh, and another thing i noticed when i was bolting this bracket down it's touching here and it's pretty much touching this bolt also. So I'm hoping once I pull this out and get it all bolted down, I might have to then put this on because they didn't center this one very good or they didn't drill and tap that hole good enough. This one, this one lines up perfectly in the center. So I, I don't know if, I don't know if that's the a manufacturer default or if it's something that this company did in order for this bracket to work. I don't know. I, I really can't point fingers, so. Same exact same thing with this one. They must have punched the hole and then bent it. You can see that this is high. Yeah, that fits pretty good. But we're gonna have to wait on that also. Uh, bracket. Go fit this one. Okay, we gotta find out what side this bracket goes on now. I'm gonna have to let my outside. Uh, so that's going to put the caliper kind of down. But I like it because the brake line's back here. Oh, I guess this floats. And this one goes in first. It sticks out so far that it won't just flop out of the way. Let's see if this pad drops in. It's so tight. I guess I gotta. All right. Well, I guess I have to wrestle it in there and hold that pad somehow. Because this is the outer pad. All right. Well, I guess I'm gonna have to hold them in there and wrestle it in there. So that looks like fun. If they shave some of this off the bottom one, you can tilt it in and out. Okay, let's see if this works better. No, it doesn't, the pad don't fit in there. What the heck? That pad don't fit in there. I wonder if there's supposed to be a spacer for this. Dang it. All right, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go try and figure out what I'm doing wrong. All right, so I made a phone call um, to the gentleman that I'm doing this work for. He said that he emailed the lug nut off-road and this is what they told him to order. But in the pictures online, this looks like it's supposed to have a offset bent into it. Conversion, but you can see how much of a gap there is here. But this is set. The bleeder screw's highest point. Everything else looks like it's going to match up good. The, I don't really like how this e-brake assembly is going to hang way down. I don't think I have another choice unless I... No, even if I reverse it because of the bleeder valve and the way this sets up, this is just going to hang super low and I guess they're just going to have to be aware that hangs low. So I'm going to go ahead and get this welded up on both sides, get all the welding done. I also have another project in the garage i got to weld up and then we'll start running the 
brake lines, and e-brake. All right, as promised, done. Both sides welded, painted. I don't know if I mentioned, but you do want to make sure you space. There's a little slide spacer in there. You're going to want to space that caliper away because if it's right against this, this pad won't get any wear. So this needs to be able to float a little bit. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and get this brake line figured out. I'm going to go get the other one. We're going to bolt it on, figure out where it needs to be. All right. Okay, we're going to hack some of this way up here where it won't affect me. Okay. We're going to reuse that piece. Okay. <clears throat> so, we're going to reuse that end. <clears throat> and I think, I think it'll look fine up here somewhere. Make sure you put this piece on the correct way. Hoping I have enough to recrimp. Get the tool set. Yep, just like that. You know, welding this tab on might be a little easier. All right, maybe we'll get this tab welded on. That doesn't want to get in there. I don't like those clips. Alright, well, this thing was whipping on me. This tab, it don't even it don't even go over that. So I don't know I don't know what they expected. I guess it so I got on the other side I made a new little brake line it was just easier the old stuff I'll show you I don't know if you could tell but it was pretty well rotted out in some spots just about at least so I had some extra line I just built a new one for that side and I thought maybe maybe a different clip would work but this is off a of Toyota and it's it's too small also. So I'm gonna spend a little time. I gotta I gotta get this to fit better. I'm gonna wanna sit out there underneath the truck and I mean I don't mind looking stupid, but this just doesn't work. This isn't me. So I'm just gonna run a file. I'm gonna file this a little bit until I can get this to fit right. I may have to flatten. I don't know, it's really hard to pick up in that, but there's a huge lip here. To where I can I I don't want it to just slip fit but I want it to I want to be able to get it on and off if this ever needs to get changed because sometimes these braided lines don't last that long sometimes they do so I've had them blow out on these cramps so I'm gonna get this to fit better snug but not permanent and then get tabs welded because I want to get this e-brake uh, stuff fixed I know the guy wants his truck back because we're calling for snow so I'll be back. All right, I got that to fit. It's real snug. I think I can still do some adjustments, but at least it's on there. So I need to get this other one rigged up and get the lines hooked up. We'll get under there and we'll start getting that accomplished, get it welded. I want to get this e-brake done, so it doesn't look super difficult. I know the instructions look a little bit vague, but they're not difficult at all. So, pretty, pretty decent. So, I'm going to get the other one rigged up, get down there, get them tacked into place, and then we'll get things hooked up. Hate to keep uh, yakking, but it's a really good idea before you do a bunch of work to see if that even fits in the new line they give you. Because you're going to be making more trips to the parts store, because you would think that this would fit this.
So we have new fittings and they fit right in there. I'm going to make another new line, crawl under there, fix the other line, and uh, keep my fingers crossed that this goes a little better. Well, this is future me. I uh, spent lots of hours editing this video. I'm going to have to put it into two parts. I made a decision to leave all the difficulties that I had, the wrong parts being ordered. I left it in there because that's that's life. That's, I mean, if, if you don't have issues like that, I'm, I'm happy, but it seems like working in a shop, I always have issues. Um, stay tuned for part two. It's very detailed on the emergency brake cable setup. I spent a lot of time to make sure that works perfect. And this is, I don't know how much longer this has been. Gentleman I did that for loves the brakes. He said they work amazing. E-brake works amazing. So like I said before, we aren't sponsored by whatever that was, lug, lug nut 4x4. Um, good kit if you order the right one. Yes, there is some things that you will have to deal with on your own, but that that's any conversion kit. So thanks for watching the video, appreciate it.